एवरीवन वेलकम टू द कोड वर्स चैनल आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग एक्सट्रीमली वेल सो इन द फर्स्ट कपल ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑफ द प्राइम सीरीज इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द प्राइम चेक एंड फैक्टर्स एंड वी डिड सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम इन द सेकंड लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द सीव एल्गोरिथम वेयर यू कैन आंसर क्वेरीज ऑफ प्राइम इन बीगो ऑफ वन कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी सो वी डिड लर्न अबाउट सीव बट वी हैव टू सॉल्व सम प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम्स सो इन टुडेस लेक्चर when you will end this lecture you will be actually solving couple of practice problems from the sieve algorithm and once you solve them you will be definitely be very very comfortable on the sieve algorithm but before we start that i'll give you a small introduction about myself my name is raj vikramaditya i'm generally known as driver in the programming community i am a competitive programmer and with that i'm also a software development engineer at media.net prior to that i was working at amazon i am rated candidate master at code forces i'm a six star at code chef and i have a couple of years of teaching experience i also run a youtube channel where i have 90000 plus subscribers the subjects that i'm going to take on this youtube channel and at an academy plus will be competitive programming data structure algorithms c++ and everything that's related to interview preparation so as you can see the lecture 3 today is on the practice problems on sieve we are going to solve couple of practice problems on the sieve algo specialty about all these courses are everything is under one subscription something like netflix if you get a computer programming subscription you'll get access to all the current live classes as well as all the recorded uh, live classes that has happened so you get subscription to everything on their platform so there are uh, four kinds of subscription 12 months 6 months 3 months 4, one month uh, you can apply the coupon code striver yes uh, remember the coupon code it's striver if you apply that you get a 10% uh, discount and what other benefits do you get at with live subscription you basically get india's best programmer teaching on that platform you saw my credentials you'll get similar guys or even better guys who are teaching over there and you also get a lot of interactive live classes like over here you cannot ask me a doubt right or if you take up a subscription and you, and you join the live classes you can pitch in your doubt during the live class so that's going to be much more interactive also you get a lot of doubt support because after the class you will definitely have doubts so for that you have a doubt support and you get uh, practice uh, problems which are relevant uh, to the topics that are being taught from code chef or code forces you got that are that are selected by instructors or educators so these are the things that you get don't forget the coupon code to apply that's striver okay so also if you are new to uh, this channel make sure you have to like this video and if you are new to this channel subscribe and this is our third lecture we will be bringing on the fourth lecture so in order to know when the fourth lecture comes you have to press the bell icon isn't it so make sure you subscribe and press the bell icon with this uh, let's not waste any further time and get started with the problem that we are going to solve the problem is finding the kth prime the question's name itself suggests what is the problem you have to find the kth prime number so let's understand the question very simple problem statement you're given some queries some queries are given to you you have to answer what what answer you have to give a uh, q lines with answer of each query and the answer of each query is the kth prime number that is what you have to state basically you're given q queries on every query there will be a number k and you have to tell which is the kth prime number for an example if i ask you in the entire universe which is the first prime number it will be like Two is the first prime number. If I ask you which is the second prime number, you'll be like three. If I ask you which is the fourth prime number, you'll be like seven. So you'll be given any random value k, and the, for every query there will be a random value k, and you'll have, you'll have to tell which is the kth prime number. The first thing to observe: till five into ten to the power six is what they can ask you prime numbers. Okay, so that is what the question states. so if you remember if you remember in the previous class i have uh, i am not erased it we have we have used the sieve concept. concept the sieve concept we will be applying over here so if you haven't seen my previous videos the prerequisite to this class will be the previous video so please make sure you watch out the previous videos otherwise uh, trust me you're not going to not going to understand everything because this is a basically continuation of the previous class so please make sure you do watch out the previous video okay so let's get started what are the constraints the constraint states Uh, you have to. You'll be asked anything, something like uh, k. K can be anything from one uh, to five into ten to the power six. That's our main concern, and there will be a lot of queries. So if I ask you, like, 
if you remember the previous class the maximum array size that you can declare is 10 to the power 8 if it's a boolean data type and you can declare that globally now if i ask you where will this prime number lie if for an example if i ask you which is the fifth prime number obviously it's not it's not under 5 the fifth prime number is 11 2 3 5 7 11 so for fifth prime the number is greater than 5 similarly for 5 into 10 to the power 6th prime the number will be very very greater than 5 into 10 to the power 6 and if you calculate uh, the best way to do that is uh, probably you can uh, check out on google or somewhere but where, what i generally do is i try to uh, solve this i'll tell you at the last how did i solve this but as of now let's understand the logic how will we find the kth prime number then at the end i'll tell you how did i figure out uh, which is the kth like what is the last kth prime what is the 5 into 10 to the power 6th prime number at last i'll tell you that okay but before that how to solve this okay so can i implement uh can i implement uh something like a square root uh nah, because there are queries and in the previous class we did learn when there are queries we're going to implement something which is known as the sieve okay so if you can can i do something i do have a black box sieve this is my black box sieve i have can i store all the primes just assume i've taken this number 10 to the power 8 just assume i've taken this number 10 to the power 8 8 uh, so can i store all the primes they were like yes driver you definitely can so what i'll do is i'll call the black box and i'll have my sieve ready okay i will have this this guy ready i'll have this guy ready the entire sieve where it'll 10 to the power 8 okay i'll have that ready once that is ready what i'll do is out of this i'll start getting all the primes and probably in some data structure i repeat probably in some data structure i'm going to store 2 3 5 7 11 13 uh, probably 17 19 and so on all the primes i repeat all the primes i can store it in some data structure for c++ guys you can store it in a vector for java guys you can store it in an array list or a list again for python you can definitely use a simple list so what i'll do is i'll try to store it okay if i store all the primes over here if i store all the primes over here uh will that work i think that will because if i can store all the primes over there if someone comes up and says me hey give me the second prime so i know the second prime will be stored at the first index because the indexing in our data structure is zero based so can i say if i'm been asked the kth prime assume this data structure is named as ds can i say after this i can directly answer the kth prime is ds of k minus one the value which is stored at the k minus one at index of our data structure yes definitely i can that's that's how you can use a sieve use a sieve create your entire sieve that's going to be a single time operation so that's a single time operation of n log of log n right after that get all primes again you're going to do that prior to your queries you're going to do that prior to your queries and once you've done that it becomes a big o of one time complexity in order to access yes it becomes a big o of one time in order to access which is my that number okay that's great that is absolutely great so how do i actually know till how much shall i run shan, uh, run the sieve so that i get the 5 into 10 to the power 6th prime number how do i know that so obviously uh, 10 to the power 8 if you run uh, the, the test cases are such that you will get something as tle so how do you know which is your 5 into 10 to the power 6th prime so that you can run your loop till that so that you can build your sieve till that so in order to do that you you don't have any other option you have to run your brute force like you have to apply your brains what you'll do is you will create your sieve okay and then just try to uh, drag your uh, loop from i equal to 2 till uh, last it'll go on till you do not get the 5 into 10 to the power 6th prime number okay that's the logic you you loop on loop on like First you got 2, so you can keep a counter. The moment you got 2, you put a counter as 1. The moment you got 3, put a counter as 2. The moment you got 5, put a counter as 3. The moment you got 7, put a counter as 4. 
the moment you got 11 put a counter as 5 the moment you got 13 put a counter as 6 so keep counting keep counting the moment the moment you get 5 into 10 to the power 6 you can actually understand till how much till how much will you get will you get your 10 to the 5 into 10 to the power 6 sixth prime okay that's that's how you do it initially just uh, while running like while coding just run it till 10 to the power 8 and after that once you figured out what is that number you can definitely compact your sieve till that i hope you got that idea i hope you got that idea so what i'll do is what i'll do is i'll try to try to run this okay so i already have this code written so this erase this code that's already the submitted code okay so what i'll do is what i'll do is i need to figure out till how much is 5 into 10 to the power 6 sixth prime so in order to do that you will say create sieve okay don't do anything just say create sieve and call int n equal to 10 to the power 8 that's uh 1 z 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 call it and create a boolean remember 10 to the power 8 is boolean so create a boolean value of n plus 1 okay so once you've created it void create sieve so if you remember this is how we did come on guys old days previous lecture only you should remember this you should definitely remember this the previous days you run a loop from this to this till this remember guys yes after that what did you do if sieve of i is true you basically run a for loop from j equal to i into i j goes on till n and j plus equal to i and what you do is sieve of j equal to false that's what you did that's how you create the sieve that is how you create the sieve so at first just in order to find what is the range till which the 5 into 10 to the power 6 guy is what is the range till which the 5 into 10 to the power guy is so you can say limit you can say limit equal to yes limit equal to probably you can keep it as 5 into 10 to the power 6 that's 3 another 3 okay right after that you can run a loop from 2 because the first prime is 2 and you can go on till uh, infinity okay so this is i'm just doing to figure out which is the last position where you can actually find the kth prime right so what you'll do is if c of i is equal to equal to remember if c of i is equal to equal to true you'll do a count plus plus okay so you can keep a count as zero so the size i can keep it as one initially so what you'll do is if your count reaches the limit that means you have got your prime and this is where your last prime is this is where your 5 into 10 to the power 6th prime is so just make sure that you make sure the size is i and you break out because that's your size and just do one thing see out of size so i've run this already you can run it i'll not waste time over here you can run it uh, if you do this if you just run this into main once you get the size that is still what value that is the value till which you will have your kth prime and you just need to create a sieve of that size because beyond that you don't require like you don't need to create a 10 to the power 8 size sieve because that that might not be the case you just require till where does 5 into 10 to the power 6 the prime lies okay you just need to do that you don't need to do anything else so if you also like if you are smart enough if you just look at the comment section you'll get that value this is the value where uh, till which the last prime lies like you can run it till here i have told you the way uh, also you can look at the comment section but comment section is not a good way because if this problem comes up in a contest and somewhere down you do not have the comment section right so that is why i uh, taught you the way this is how you can get that size so once you've got that size again do the same thing right just make sure you've got this size once you've got this size that's okay you can remove it and n will be declared as this and yeah this is how your c will look like now what you can do since you once you've got that n you know that till this n you'll get your 5 into 10 to the power 6 -th prime store all the primes so we'll uh, create a data structure like vector uh, probably say ds again uh, java people can do it as array list or a list i hope you know that right so what you'll do is we'll store all the primes from 2 
till that number because you know that is where the kth number is so if that's a prime if that's a prime you will say hey data structure why don't you store that prime he'll be like okay give me now why don't you give me i'll store it definitely so what i've done is i have run a sieve my sieve is ready after that i've run a loop till n and i figured out what are the primes and i've stored every prime in a data structure correct so i've done the create now it's time for the queries so i'll take the queries so these are the queries so the queries are saying we will have the queries are saying we will have a k so i'll say okay why don't you give me the k let's check so i've taken the k so can i say the answer will be nothing but the data structure of k minus one because it's a zero based so in this way you can get all your k -th prime numbers in bco of one complexity and if i ask you what's the time complexity you know for this it takes n log of log n and for this it's a 10 to the powers not 10 to the power 8 exactly it's somewhere like 10 to the power 8 into 10 to the power 7 is somewhere like this so it works this is still under 10 to the power 8 so this is definitely going to work but if you if you submit this by doing 10 to the power 8 it will give you tle why because you are doing n log of log n here and then another 10 to the power 8 here so it exceeds that's why you have to figure this exact value out even if you give 9 into 10 to the power 7 it it passes i've, I've checked it out even if you give this 9 into 10 to the power 7 it will pass but again it's optimum to find it because logically you have to be clear now it is passing that's not the stuff logically your concept should be clear so make sure you do this cool so that's how i can say that is passing that's the first problem that we have solved so I hope you have learned a lot from that, uh, how to detect where the kth prime is and all. Let's uh, come to the next question. The next question is a similar query type of question. Remember in primes, if it's a query type of question, you get an idea, you get a notion that the sieve concept will definitely be used. Okay. So I'll give you the next uh, set of question or next question. So the next question states, you are said, ki, we, you know that the numbers are from 1 to 10 to the power 6. Okay. You have clearly stated that your range is 1 to 10 to the power 6. Now you'll be given multiple queries. Okay, you'll be given multiple queries. So every query will have an integer n. Every query will have an integer n. Now you need to tell, you need to tell how many numbers, how many numbers in the range 1 to 10 to the power 6 have minimum prime factor very important minimum prime factor as the number n what does that mean so if i give you two if i give you two if i give you something like n equal to two as a query and i ask you two is the minimum prime factor of which number so in order to do that you should understand what is the minimum prime factor if I give you a number like 15 and you do the prime factorization of it, it's 3 cross it 5. It's 3 cross 5. So if I ask you what's the minimum prime factor of 15, you'll be like 3. It's 3. It's not 5. If 15 is written as 3 cross 5, the minimum prime factor is indeed 3 and not 2. Sorry, and not 5. So the smallest, the smallest prime factor. So if I ask you, this guy 2 is the minimum prime factor of which, how many numbers? in this given range so you will be like you will be like this guy is a minimum prime factor of 2 4 6 8 9 oh, sorry 10 10 12 14 and so on till 10 to the power 6 which is an app uh, which is actually fifth these many numbers 50,000 these uh, 50,000 yoga, na? I think near about that 50,000 if I went to 10 to the power near about that Jobiak. So it's almost near about those many numbers. So you have to just count, you have to count these numbers. Similarly, if I ask you for three, if I give you n equal to three, what will be the answer? Again, you'll count for three. Three is a number whose minimum prime factor is three. Six, will you count six? Na, 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 na. Why not? Because for six, if you do the prime factorization, it's two cross three. It's 2 cross the 2 is the minimum prime factor. So 2 is that's not. So it's a 9. It's a 9. 
it's uh, 15 it's a 21 and so you have to count like this you have to keep a count and if you have keep if you have kept a count you can easily answer the query so a notion uh, how to solve this problem obviously the brute force won't be efficient because imagine uh, you have a lot of queries imagine the number of queries are somewhere in the range 10 to the power 6 a lot of queries so obviously doing a brute force is something like this a brute force if i write the brute force don't you think the brute force is something like this i equal to a 2 just imagine the query number is uh, n uh, i is a 2 and i goes on till 10 to the power 6 i goes i plus plus and i say if 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 n modulo i is equivalent to 0 you will be like i'll do a count plus plus and at the end of the day you'll just print out count isn't it you'll just say you'll just say print count correct that's the brute force but for every query you'll end up for every query you'll end up running a loop of 10 to the power 6 for every query you are running a loop of 10 to the power 6 which is a big o of 10 to the power 6 solution correct so that's that's not a that's not a liable one because for every query you're going to take 10 to the power 6 time so this is going to give you tle this is where your brain should start of thinking of optimizations so if i scroll back to sieve if i scroll back to sieve let's scroll back to the sieve concept that i gave you can i say to will be marking its multiples while during doing the sieve to will be marking its multiples during the sieve why can't i keep a counter when two marks why can't i sit back and count while two marks we're like yes we can yes we can so you will definitely do that similarly while three marks it starts from nine goes to 12 goes to 15 but it only marks nine as true because 12 12 was already marked by two so we don't count that so can i say while operating the sieve if i can count if i can count my job becomes easy i can pre-compute i can pre-compute and then answering queries becomes much easier much easier isn't it so it'll be like correct that is why we are going to use sieve so again if you did not understand i'll give you a short again overview of the question just need to figure out for a query n equal to 2 or anything how many numbers in the range 1 to 20 10 to the power 6 how many numbers have minimum prime factor as 2 or a minimum prime factor as 3 or a minimum prime factor as 5 you will be given numbers you'll be given numbers and you have to tell for how many their minimum prime factors not factor minimum prime factor okay i hope that makes absolute sense okay so i've i've, I've given you the intuition of using sieve because sieve uh, makes sure that it marks it so now how will i actually solve it so I'll try to implement a logic such that I can incorporate my answer in the sieve itself. Can you do that? I can do that using an external map, but I want to incorporate my answer in the sieve only so that I don't use any external space. I don't use any external space. So I'm thinking, how, how, how am I thinking? What if, what if, what if I give, I give everyone the value one. I give everyone the value one. I'll be like, okay, that's, that's not a bad idea. Or what if I give everyone the value zero? I'll be like, okay, okay, we can think of it. We can definitely think of it. By the way, uh, just a small constraint, I'll add it. The query n that is given to you, that will always be a prime number, okay? Because since the question states prime factor, that's, that is why the query will always be in itself a prime number. You don't have to worry about that. The query will always be given as a prime number. It won't be a non-prime number. So what I'll do is, again, in order to explain as the other day, what I'll do is I'll simply take a smaller array so that I can easily explain you guys. So guys, are you enjoying? Please make sure you drop in a comment because that is what actually, see, that, that helps a creator, right? So please make sure you drop in a comment. Uh, the entire team is working effortlessly. I make the videos, I make the videos, they edit it, they, they take all the content, they review it. Then, then a quality content comes to you. So everyone is working hard. So please just make sure. Just please, uh, 
just make sure you like it it won't cost you anything correct and share it among your friends because we're gonna take a lot of classes like this so please make sure you share it among your friends also okay so oh man we are one shot i was so good i just i was just one shot not an issue okay so logically what i'll do is i will put everyone as one okay let's do that let's put everyone as one i'll be like okay that's that's not a bad idea why don't i put everyone as one okay let's put everyone as one except these guys so i'll put everyone as one okay since uh, the query stated ki n will always be less than 10 to the power 6 so we will put everyone as one okay so let's put everyone as one so i'll put everyone as one guys so i'll put everyone as one okay i'll use the c array itself in order to store answers what i'll do is i know for two the multiples are i'll change the color for two the multiples are four i'll go to four and i'll say zero and the moment i mark someone zero the moment i mark someone zero you will increase this value to 2. The moment I mark this 6 as 0, it will increase this value to 3. The moment I mark this 8 as 0, I will increase this to 4. The moment I mark this as 0, I will increase this to 5. The moment I mark this as 0, I will increase this to 6. The moment I mark this as 0, I will increase this to 7. The moment I mark this as 0, I will increase this to 8. Again, I can just keep on doing this 0, 10 ojaiga. This will become 11, this will become 12, yeah, so I'll have 12 guys. So at the end of the day, the 2, the 2 will store 12. Amazing, just, just, how amazing is that? Next, you'll move to the third guy. So when you move to the third guy, and I ask you, hey, for the third guy, what will be your answer? You'll be like, I'll start marking from 9, not from 6. So it'll be like, I'll start marking from 9. Remember, previous class, optimization. You don't start from 6, you start from 9. So let's start from 9. So if I start from 9, 9 will be marked as 0. This becomes 2. Will you count 12? 12 is already someone else was the minimum prime factor. Will you mark? No. No, no, no. So I'll move next. 15 will be marked. Next, 18. Will that be marked? Mm -hmm. 21, will that be? Yes. 24 nah so that's that is what i can say that i had uh, three numbers again makes sense 9 15 and 21 because other numbers in this range as of now the range is only till 25 not 10 to the power 6 that's why we only got three numbers which are the which has minimum prime factor as 3 similarly if you do for 5 where do you start 5 from you start from 25 the moment you go to 25, mark it as 0 and this can be made too. So in this way, you can easily do it using sieve, isn't it? What's the complexity of sieve? n log of log n. So I made sure I apply a sieve and my answer array is ready. If someone asks you the answer, if they're asking you the answer, what's the answer for 2? It'll be like the answer is sieve of 2. Someone asks you, what's the answer for 3? The answer is sieve of 3. Someone asks you, what's the answer for 5? Sieve of 5 becomes easier. Even this works for non-prime. Because if someone is asking for non-prime, the answer is already 0. Because non-primes cannot be the minimum prime factor of any other guy. Agreed? Yes, you agree, right? So now it's time to code the solution up. So let's call it as uh, void create sieve again. So I'm just writing it over here itself. Okay. I'm just writing it over here. So can I say the create sieve will have something as I'll, I'll just copy paste the entire thing so that I don't have to write it again and again. Let's copy paste it the entire stuff. Can I say this was for the previous problem so I can erase it now. This was for the previous problem so I can erase it now. Okay. So currently I have this void create sieve. So can I say I'll have an n since it was 10 to the power 6 where you can definitely create this. And this time the sieve will be of int instead of a boolean. It will be of int. Correct. So that will be of n plus 1 size. It will be an int sieve and that will be of an n plus 1 size. Next, what will we do? Uh, we will mark everyone as 1. That was our first criteria. Perfect. And we inside that when we go, if it's a 1, then only we will go. 
if inside we are going and seeing that it is already marked as a non zero then can i say my sieve of i will count it because it's it's a number whose minimum prime factor is i hence i'll count it and at the same time i'll make sure that this guy has made zero that's the step just a check you have to make sure it's checked because someone else would have marked there's no point in counting that so once you've created the sieve i think your answer is ready and once you now get the n once you get the n you can definitely print out the answer to be sieve of n and that is going to be your answer so again the answer query you can answer every query in bigo of 1 as you can see you can answer every query in bigo of 1 with a pre computation of n log of log n amazing isn't it but just so small pre computation you can do so many stuffs so guys i hope you have understood the entire explanation entire code just in case you did please make sure you hit that like button because that's that that is what that is what motivates me and if you're new to our channel please make sure you subscribe to it and the bell icon please make sure you press it because we have couple of lectures more so in order to know when they are posted you have to press that bell icon so make sure you press it and now yeah, with this let's wrap up this video and meet in the next lecture bye bye take care